Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 26. There was a comment on one of my earlier blogs uh, from someone called Walter, and he had a question about um, multimeters and the counts, like, you know, 4,000 count multimeter, and how that, what are counts, and how that relates to multimeter accuracy. And I thought that's a pretty good question. It's um, something a lot of people don't really understand all that well. So let's, you know, I thought I'd clear it up. A three and a half digit meter can actually display plus or minus 1,999. The half in the, the half actually means that the most significant digit can only go to one. It can only be zero or one. So a three and a half digit meter can go up to 1999. A four and a half digit meter can go to plus minus 19999. We started advertising them as three and three quarter digits or three and two thirds digits. And that's where it gets a bit confusing. There's no real standard for that. But um, typically if, it, if it's got like two thirds or three quarters or something like that, they really mean that it can go a bit further than one. So it might be um, 3999 or it might be 2999 or even 4999 or something like that. Now because it started becoming quite confusing manufacturers started talking in terms of uh, the number of counts and I think this is a much better way to do it. So a, a three and a half digit multimeter at plus minus 1999 is actually a 2000 count meter because it counts up to plus minus 2000. And likewise, a four and a half digit meter is actually a 20,000 count. You can use these terms interchangeably. Now, how does this relate to accuracy? Well, it actually doesn't relate at all. It's got nothing to do with accuracy. So let's talk about this. Now, accuracy is a term when it comes to multimeters, people get it wrong all the time. And I'm, I'm guilty of saying it too through sheer laziness or, you know, habit. It's wrong to say that this meter has an accuracy of four and a half digits or an accuracy of 10,000 counts. That is completely wrong. The uh, counts, the number of um, digits is the resolution. So it's, you should say that this meter has a 10,000 count resolution, not a 10,000 count accuracy. And if you, you know, if you say the wrong thing, it can make you seem like a bit of a dunce, especially if you're in a job interview or something and they ask the question, it can make you look like you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, three typical multimeters and how the, uh, the number of digits or the resolution affects um, the usability of these meters. Now, I've got a Fluke 79 series two here. Now this is a um, 4,000 count or a three and three quarter digit meter. I've got the Meter Man 37XR here and uh, this one is a 10,000 count meter. The Fluke 87.5 here is a four and a half digit meter but I've got it in, it's actually got a mode that is actually um, 6,000 count mode. Okay now I'm feeding the same voltage into all three meters and you can see they all read fairly similar there you know there's there's slight differences there but let's have a look what happens when I turn the voltage up here okay now if I had a three and a half digit meter here which I don't it would have actually dropped down to two decimal places because it would have been over the 1999 limit but none of them have reached that yet so let's keep turning this up okay and see which one actually drops its range first and I'm sure you can guess which one it's going to be bingo there it is the fluke 79 series 2 because this is a 4000 count meter we're over that 4000 we're basically over four so it's got to go up to the next highest range so we lose one digit of resolution okay not accuracy now if we keep turning this up we'll find that the Fluke 87.5 here is a 6,000 count, so as soon as it gets to 6, or just slightly over, bang, it's changed up a range also. So a, this is, uh, now, these are giving the same resolution, okay? This is a much more expensive meter um, at 6,000 count, okay? 
but it's but they've got the same resolution. Now this meter man 37XR at 10,000 count, you're still getting the extra digit of resolution. And this won't change ranges until you go right up to until you pass that 9999 limit. And bingo, there it is. Half digits, they're all back on an even playing field. But let's switch the Fluke 87.5 to four and a half digit mode, okay? Now we've got this extra digit of resolution here. Not accuracy, resolution. Now, you'll find that this 87.5, four and a half digit meter is useful until, once again, we get up to Once again, we get up to 20 odd volts and bingo, it's gone back. So you can say that the four and a half digit meter only has more resolution for 20% of its range over the 10,000 count meter. I said before that resolution, the number of digits on the display has nothing to do with accuracy. And that's true, okay? Accuracy of the meter is based on the percentage of the actual reading, not a full scale. So a meter's accuracy will be specified as the percentage of the reading plus counts. Now, a typical, like a good meter might have point, an accuracy of 0.1% plus two counts. Now, what that means is if you're measuring one volt, okay, you will have an, it will have an uncertainty of plus or minus one millivolt. 0.1% of one volt is one millivolt. But you have to add on two counts to that, plus or minus two counts to that displayed value. So it will be, if it's actually reading exactly one volt, okay, 1.000, then it can actually be uh, 1.003 or plus minus or 0.997. So that's resolution and accuracy. Now let's talk about calibration. Everyone knows that, uh, you know, you should get your meter calibrated. What does that actually mean? What it means is that the meter has been checked. It's been, it doesn't, calibration does not mean adjustment of your meter. When you send this away for calibration, it, they usually don't adjust it. What they will do is they'll measure it against a reference standard and they will give you a test report for this, um, giving you the actual, typically giving you the actual figure and, um, you know, and the error against that absolute reference or that transfer standard. And what you do with that calibration information determines how this multimeter is going to be used within your company, what applications it's going to use for and how often you're going to calibrate it. Now, just because a meter has been calibrated yesterday does not mean it's going to be within spec today. It's, uh, it's all about calibration is about the history of this meter tracing. It's about traceability. You need to trace uh, the calibration of this media, you need a historical record of it over time and then you build up confidence in this meter that it's not drifting. This is why some companies and some industries will actually, uh, uh, you know, you have to actually use two multimeters to take a measurement just in case one of them has, you know, is, is actually out and they will you know, anyone serious about electronics will actually have two multimeters. They won't rely on just one. They'll have two so that you can cross-check each other and you can actually use a good known multimeter as a, as a bit of a transfer standard to uh, check and measure other instruments. And if you've got a bunch of multimeters, you can all cross-measure themselves and you get more confidence that your meter is within specification. Usually you'll follow the manufacturer's recommendation, which might be say every 12 months. But when you first get an instrument, you might want to calibrate it more often so that you build up more of that reference, that historical reference data so you can track it. And once you know this meter is not, you know, it's really stable and it's not drifting at all, then you might actually widen your uh, period of calibration 12 months, then you know, it still hasn't drifted at all. You might actually change it to two years.